Welcome, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Top 10 New Strategies That Will Light Your Marketing on Fire. My name is Eliana Raggio, and I'll be your moderator today. And today's webinar is being presented by DealerOn. And for anyone who isn't familiar with DealerOn, well, we're an award-winning website development company and digital agency, best known for our search engine optimization, best-in-class customer service, and our award-winning websites. Recently at NADA, DealerOn received the Best in Show Award for Website Design from Dealer Marketing Magazine. DealerOn was also named the top-rated website provider by driving sales in 2012 and 2013. And oh yeah, it's official, DealerOn customers have been winners of the Digital Dealer Website Excellence Awards highly coveted overall winner four times in a row. DealerOn is so committed to lead conversion, optimization, and customer service that we're the only company in the industry to offer a money-back lead guarantee program. So does your website company guarantee you leads? Hmm. Well, then maybe you should check us out at DealerOn.com. And we have a great show in store for you today. We're very pleased to have not one, but two auto industry powerhouses as our presenters today. Kate Frost is the president of Kate Frost, Inc., which helps their dealership clients to improve their lead handling processes and digital marketing. Kate has an extensive background in automotive advertising and brings a unique insight into the automotive digital marketing realm. From online advertising and branding to engaging social media and website enhancement, Kate helps establish and maintain dealerships' digital presence. With well over a decade invested in the automotive industry, she has collaborated with numerous OEMs, dealer groups, and single store operations, both through in-store, outside sales, and most recently in a digital media consulting capacity. Kate is a busy public speaker and an avid traveler, and she can be reached at Kate at KateFrostInc.com. Joining Kate Frost today is April Rain, the CEO of Digital Rain Inc., a consulting, training, and events company dedicated to the automotive e-commerce industry. She educates dealers on enhancing their online marketing, maximizing resources, reducing cost of customer acquisitions, increasing digital presence, monetizing third-party traffic, and creating real-world steps for success. Her goal with clients is to assist them with striving for excellence when managing digital media process and creating significant presences with e-commerce, reputation management, social media, online marketing, and website performance. And April dares you to find her on Twitter, Facebook, or LinkedIn, or contact her directly at april at digitalrainink.com. Now, during the presentation, if you have any questions, please use the question feature located on the corner of your screen to submit them. At the end of the presentation, we'll answer those questions of general interest. If we're unable to get to your question live, don't worry, we're going to respond by email later today. Also, don't forget, a link to download a copy of the webinar recording is also going to be emailed to you later today for your reference. Please, feel free to share it with friends and colleagues. And I also want to let you know that DealerOn is going to be at the upcoming Digital Dealer Convention in Las Vegas, baby. It's going to be at the Mirage, October 15, 16, and 17, and we're going to be at booth 809. So if you're going to be there, well, then we want to see you. Please stop by and see us. I'm going to be there, and I'd love to shake your hand. We're also going to have not one, not two, but four DealerOn presenters during this year's DDC Fall Conference. So if you're going to be there, hey, you've got to check out these speaking sessions. They are going to be fantastic. You definitely don't want to miss them. And for more information or to get your tickets, go check out digitaldealerconference.com. And guess what? Our good friends at Kate Frost Inc. and Digital Rain Inc. are giving away two fantastic prizes today on the webinar. First, one of you lucky webinar attendees is going to win a recorded social media evaluation with free recommendations provided by Kate Frost Inc. It's valued at $200. And another of you lucky webinar attendees is going to be winning a free one-hour analytics evaluation for measuring traffic and social ROI. And that's going to be provided by Digital Rain Incorporated, also valued at $200. You have to be on the live broadcast to win it. But just stay tuned for the details after Kate and April's presentation, and you could be scoring one of these totally cool prizes today. And our fantastic presenters are also giving you the inside track to win an exclusive ultimate prize. What is it? It is VIP access to the exclusive exotic race car and innovative focus group experience in Vegas 
prior to Driving Sales Executive Summit, and it's hosted by Car Gurus. This prize is valued at a thousand dollars, and we're not going to be naming the winner today. But all you have to do is go to the link provided in the chat window and enter to win. Actually, I'm going to send it out to everyone right now. And this contest is by invitation only, and you have to be officially invited, which you are right now. So go to that link, read the contest rules, and good luck, everyone. Also, at the conclusion of the webinar, you're going to receive a short survey. So fill it out, because we're always looking for great feedback from our audience. Today, we're going to randomly select a couple of people from all the completed surveys to also win some Google Prizes. So let's get started. We're going to have some fun today. Let's learn the top 10 strategies that will light your marketing on fire. Kate and April, how are you today? Great. Thanks so much for having us on, Eliana. You're very welcome. April, where are you, my love? I am in Manhattan right now. <laughs> well, well, at least you I want you to know, I think both of you are just absolutely fantastic. Of course, I've had both of you on my show before, but this is the first time that we're doing a broadcast with the two of you together. So thank you so much. We've got girl power in the house. And by the way, April Rain and Kate Frost, if those two aren't the best weather girl names I have ever heard, my two meteorologists, so tell me, what are we going to be learning about today? What's, what do we have clued in for the show today? A lot about weather, a lot about <laughs> predicting weather. Um, no, actually, thank you so much for having us on. I know that we're both really excited. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Um, I think we're really going to provide you with some great stuff that I'm excited about. Um, having been in the automotive industry um, and handling marketing for more than 10 years, I think that we've all seen a lot of the same ideas over and over, um, the phrase, you know, lipstick on a pig kind of comes to mind in a lot of ways. And so what we want to challenge you with today and what we hope to achieve is to get you inspired, um, really to think beyond automotive, um, make it easy for your customers to choose you, and walk away with at least one new idea that you're excited about and that you're ready to implement. Um, and so I want to kind of kick things off, Eliana, with our first poll question, just to really get a sense of who we have on the line and, and what, what they're challenged with. I think that's a great idea. Okay, audience, we're starting off with a poll question. So please, look at your screen and let's go to it right now. We want to know, how unique are your dealership's current marketing efforts? And please, for this answer, question, please just select one of the following answers. Do you do a great job at being unique in the market? Do you have moments of brilliance and inspiration? <laughs> do you have a desire to be different, but you just don't know how? Do you try really hard, but your success rate maybe is still pretty low? Or honestly, your stuff looks just like everyone else's stuff. Whatever the answer is, we want to know. We're going to discuss that. We're going to help you out today, right? Right, Kate and yeah, April? Absolutely. That's right. So what we're waiting for is a lot of these votes to come in. Once we get a majority of the votes in, we will close this poll, share the results, and we'll know what you and everyone else on this broadcast is thinking about today. So we actually have a lot of votes coming in. They're coming in fast and furious. And audience, Thank you so much for participating in our poll questions. We, of course, appreciate your participation in these poll questions as we do your attendance today on our webinar. And guess what? I'm going to give you another 10 seconds, then we'll close the poll and share the results because we have a lot of votes in. And Kate and April, if you're ready, I'm going to let you know what our audience is saying today. You ready? Sounds perfect. Yep, absolutely. Here we go. We're going to close this poll, share the results. Okay, so, so far today, 13% of today's audience said that they think they do a great job at being unique in the market. Awesome for you. Great. Nice. But the majority, 53% of today's audience, says they are plagued with moments of inspiration and brilliance. <laughs> we have 18% of today's audience says that they have a desire to be different. They're just not sure how. 10% said that they try really hard, but they still have a pretty low success rate. And 8% are honest with us and they are admitting that their stuff pretty much looks like everyone else's stuff. Kate and April, what do you think? Um, I think that 
April, let's go with you. <laughs> I was going to say one, I think the 13% are obviously Kate customers. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, I, I would say that um, that's probably right in line with, with where I, I thought that the audience would be. Um, I think that we do have moments of brilliance, and then perhaps they're, they're cannibalized, and we look to you know, our competitors to see what they're doing. I think if you turn on the radio, you hear that we all like to kind of use the same guy who yells price and payments, our newspaper ads look similar, you know, we have a lot of the same marketing messages out there. Perhaps the execution is a little bit different, but at the end of the day, I think we're doing um, a lot of the same things, and, and some of it's copycatting, and, and that's great, but what we want to provide you with today is um, really give you some, some great ideas to steal. Um, so. I think it definitely is good marketers copy um, and then great marketers steal. So here's the first one that we want um, you to, to steal and take away. So um, having worked with the dealers for a long time on social media, one of the things that is kind of the same across all platforms is that we like to take pictures of customers at the time of delivery. And I think the intention with that is very strong, that we had decided um, that was a great way to, to give back to our customers. Hopefully, we could tag our customers in that photo so that they could share it with their 250 friends that they just purchased a vehicle from us. But along the way, we've kind of forgotten that well, we would need to personally be friends with them, and then they would also need to like our page. And so maybe the, the execution isn't always there. And that we could be left with, with some photos, perhaps, that um, are a little dark, maybe don't do the, the quality of the branding that they should, um, don't highlight the dealership or necessarily the vehicle. Um, but I, I still really like the idea of taking those customer photos. But I, I looked and found a, a cupcake company, actually, that I think does a great job with it. So this company is called Just Baked. And what they do is a great job of providing engagement through these visuals. And they encourage their fans to share posts of themselves through Facebook, Instagram, and email. And then they select a photo each week to be used as their cover photo. And then the fan wins a half a dozen cupcakes. So I think this is a really great idea. It's a simple idea that will force you to perhaps take some better pictures, make it a more thoughtful process, and really give those customers the recognition that I think we originally set out to do. So I would challenge all of you with some of those photos that, that you've taken to, um, to spend a little bit more time to crop them, to make them the fan of the week, and to highlight that um, for your customers. The next thing that I want to talk to you about is um, a company called Nasty Gal. And Nasty Gal is the fastest growing online clothing company with sales of over $128 million. And I went ahead and put the, um, the cover of Inc. Magazine on there as well just to lend some credibility so I'm not just coming up with this, this funny name. But what you can see is um, there. The owner of Nasty Gal is this 28-year-old girl named Sofia Amoroso. And what she's done is really grown a business that went from an eBay store to this huge phenomenon, which is this $128 million company in four short years. And um, a large reason that they've been so successful is because they have such an engaged audience and they leverage social media to build their brand and introduce new products. And as a result, they really have a cult-like following. So I would encourage all of you to, um, to check them out on Facebook, as I've done. And, and I should mention that at the end of this, um, both April and I will have an index um, of, of resources on our Facebook pages where you can go and, and highlight some of these. So I, you're more than welcome to take notes, of course, but we'll have some of these for you as well. So one of the things I noticed when I started following um, them on Facebook is they do a really great job. Every single post they have contains a photo, and it also has a link either back to their website or one of their digital assets. And um, it was around the time of 4th of July, and I was probably looking for a bunch of, um, you know, firework pictures to post for, for my dealerships. But I thought this was really interesting. So 
their post was turn your backyard barbecue into a full-on dance party and it had a link to their blog and when you clicked on it what you saw was a Spotify playlist of music that you could play at your 4th of July backyard barbecue and for those of you that don't know Spotify is a free music sharing site that allows you to put together and share playlists by title by artist by genre um, perhaps you've even seen some of your friends using it on Facebook but it really made me think I mean what goes better than driving and listening to music right they're hand in hand it's like peanut butter and jelly and um, certain songs have you dancing in your seat and rolling down your windows and singing at the top of your lungs so I've started thinking about how can we evoke that feeling for your customers and I think it's a great way we can create these playlists um, for our customers either on new model releases on seasons you know songs of summer or even right now with football kicking into high gear having a tailgating playlist but it's a great way to ask your existing fans what they're listening to and then have them dancing in their seat as they're listening to to your music um, at work or at home on one of their devices so April, do you use Spotify at all? Do you listen to music through that channel? So I like how that's your question, Dean, is that uh, six months ago, I don't even think I had even heard of Spotify uh, until you brought it up and me not wanting to be embarrassed about not being as cool and trendy as you. I went and Googled it. But I remember <laughs> you saying, hey, you know, when we do the fall conferences and we're thinking about like really cool, innovative ways, one of my ideas is, you look at people using Spotify, and I was like, yeah, that's a great idea. Let's do it. And then I got off the phone and, like, Googled it. Like, Spotify. <laughs> so, uh, but, but once again, like, I mean, things kept on really fast from, like, the day I downloaded the app. I, I've used it really consistently, and I started seeing how uh, people are doing these, like, clusters of being able to create emotion for music to be able to, uh, right now, the Cosmopolitan website, when you go to Book for Vegas, it has a, a, a series of tracks of music that makes you have a, a feeling about how trendy and cool the hotel is. So Very uh, cool. I, I see this as a good idea. So uh, you can already start to see the nature of the division of Kate and our friendship, right? So whereas Kate gets to come up with really cool titles like Get Baked and Get Nasty, mine are like Get Real. <laughs> and so uh, she gets to be uh, the quirky. Uh, social media expert here, and I used to be more of the marketing person. But you know, to, to that point, the things that uh, was funny about when we were looking at these other slides and these other companies like Nasty Gal, these companies weren't afraid to address the new consumer. I mean, the whole point of uh, this discussion is like looking at things, uh, addressing the new consumer in the ways that they want to be addressed. People are adapting to technology and media really quickly, and they're more comfortable one highlighting themselves online and being much more real with the brand. They don't want a sales pitch anymore. They don't want they want the honest truth. They want to see things for what this is. So for example, this is like a car ad that I'm pretty sure I've seen this girl in seven different car ads for different finance or live chat or dealership or no yeah. And in all honesty if you think about this that the consumer is looking at this, this is not your average customer. This isn't your average customer any more than this guy is your average sales guy. <laughs> really, I mean, it would be nice if we were all six foot and dark hair and flawless skin, but it's not realistic. So I really gravitated what, like how Skype and a couple other companies are really using like real people as their example of consumers. So it's people, it's people with tattoos, it's people that uh, every day. When you're, when you're putting together your ads, Start thinking about, like, who are you trying to address? Who are you trying to appeal to? Make it much more eye-catching by making it real. One of the reasons Kate addressed that uh, all of our ads look the same. I know we're confined by OEM uh, co-op and stipulations and regulations, but that's really for marketing the card, not necessarily marketing you, the dealership, and your brand. And so, you know, everything that we're pulling out are ways in which how can you get customers to take notice? How can you get them to engage with your brand? And the next one is, I feel like it really sums up this quote by uh, Carl Lagerfeld, really sums up how I feel uh, about the online process. And it says, there is something unexcited about buying something exciting online. 
I like the physical contact with the goods. Since uh, we're in automotive, and I'm guessing we have a, a pretty high male-dominated attendee list right now, uh, Carla Lagerfeld is the chief uh, designer for Gucci. I'm sorry, for Chanel and Fendi, and he also has his own series of high-end uh, products. Uh, Chanel has completely figured out that uh, they don't allow you to buy anything online. They don't allow you to buy any of their products online whatsoever. They don't even list prices online, which I know car dealers always go back and forth on whether they should list prices. But uh, you have to go into a Chanel store and be able to catch a purse and look at it and have a conversation and really fall in love with it uh, while you're in front of it. And Carl Lagerfeld sums that up in this tweet that it's about the experience of being in front. And as much as sometimes we know that consumers don't always gravitate toward uh, the negotiation aspect of buying a car, they absolutely love buying a car. They get really excited. It's still one of the most emotional uh, purchases that they can make. And so one of the things that Carl Lagerfeld did is he built a pop-up concept store in Europe. And in the dressing rooms, he put an iPad that was already preset that the people trying on the different clothes could take a picture of what they were trying on, and then it instantly tweeted, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, sent it out. And this is a great way for him to take excited, happy, fun consumers sharing their own brands. This is such a new generation. Uh, this is something that you can easily do in your dealership. All of our ideas that Kate and I put together are all extremely affordable options. They're nothing that requires a huge agency to implement. A $4.99 iPad would get this done. But this allows you to really connect with your consumers and engage with them on a new way. Uh, and you know, find something that's unique to your store. There's a uh, dealership in St. Louis. I think Kelly Wilson's on the call. She, she's going to know who I'm talking about. There's a dealership in St. Louis that uh, about 20 years ago, they would go make their first commercial. And as a gift, uh, the owner of the store got this like, hideous jacket. Horribly ugly. And as a joke, he decided to wear it for his first commercial. And it started to become uh, the culture of that store was the, the dad would wear this like ugly jacket. And then once the son took over in his commercials, he would start wearing it. And if that was me, I mean, that, that became a St. Louis you know, tradition about that dealership. When people buy a car, they get you know, their picture taken in that jacket. Or you know, it's, a, it's a way to get community involvement in, in a digital way. But, uh, I love that idea, and not just because it's related to clothes. Um, <laughs> although it helps, certainly. Um, the next thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about is, I'm sure something everybody in, in the automotive industry um, lives on, which is Dunkin' Donuts and coffee. And originally, when I had come up with this idea, I really liked that they were using um, Vine as part of a contest. And their contest was that you had to create um, a six-second Vine video that talked about how iced coffee put a spring in your step. And they had a lot of entries. They had a hashtag to track everything. But um, in doing some research for this, I was actually more excited to see that last week, um, Dunkin' Donuts ran a spot on ESPN's Monday Night Football with a Vine-based commercial and then tagged it with the Dunkin' Replay hashtag and promoted it um, via paid tweets. And I thought that this was a, a really awesome idea, probably because I, I am such a social media geek, but I loved what um, this guy Scott had to say about it, which is that uh, something we all know. Everyone is multitasking while watching TV with their phone, tablet, or lot or a laptop, a lot of times the content on their mobile device is not related to their TV shows. We want to make sure we're supporting our TV investment with social media that's relevant. It's our job to make sure that it's tied together to drive consumer engagement. So what I especially love about this is that it is taking this you know, new social media platform, but then using it in a very traditional way. And while a Vine video um, may only be six seconds, you know, Instagram a few months ago came out with their um, video application, which is 15 seconds. And I'm sure a lot of you out there are already doing 15-second um, spots, producing those, purchasing the time on there. And what a great way to, to stand out from the pack, um, because you have not only the, the traditional audience, but you're reaching a social audience um, with it as well. So really fun idea. 
Mm -hmm. You know what's, uh, what's interesting about this too is like it shows, it, it's physically showing how fast people are evolving. I mean, we went from YouTube where anybody could watch a two, three, four minute video we're right. behind being a couple seconds long. Once again, I only got clued into this after you and David met or were having a conversation, and I had to once again nod my head like I knew what you guys were saying. I mean, <laughs> can go Google it. But, uh, I mean, this is completely addressed to the ADD nation where I could just sit at home and watch a whole bunch of six-second vid videos without feeling overly committed. But uh, I know that when I was like, well, how could this be marketing you know, capable, uh, I love that you came up with the Dunkin' Donuts. I know we were also talking the other day about how I really like the uh, uh, the Lowe's, uh, uh -huh. six seconds where Lowe's did a big campaign where they went around in six different areas of the house uh, use, using Vine, so it was really quick. Uh, and, and for people that don't know, Vine, you can, uh, it, it's self-produced inside the app. There is no, I video it, and then I edit it, and then I upload it to YouTube, and then I wait for it to render, and then it's got to get approved. It's all instantaneous, like built into the app. So I, I thought that the, makes it really easy to be able to generate content really fast. Really easy to use, great for how-tos, as you mentioned with Lowe's. Um, good for you guys offering quick service tips, um, you know, Bluetooth connectivity, any of those. It's, it's a really quick format to get your, your message out there without a lot of effort. Um, the next thing is uh, on, on Pinterest. and. When I started talking uh, to dealers about Pinterest last year, I got a lot of um, funny looks and faces, and still do, but um, the reality is that Pinterest is the fastest growing social media channel and is getting first page Google results for a lot of my dealers. So if you're not on Pinterest or your dealership isn't on Pinterest, I would really encourage you to be there because nearly 80% of uh, Pinterest users are women, which is, of course, also the same audience that you're trying to reach during the car buying um, process. You know, they are the decision makers, and um, I'm not just saying that because um, the only three people that can talk on this call are women, but um, <laughs> <it> helps. <laughs> um, so, but it's <laughs> true. <laughs> it is. Um, thank you, Eliana. So the, um, the one thing that we do know from Zmot is that customers um, are going to an average of 18 different websites. Um, so it's not surprising that during those 18 different websites um, that women are starting to create these boards to organize their shopping information. And, and this is a real screenshot of a Pinterest um, board where it's this woman, Megan, who is clearly looking for a vehicle. And you can see that she's pinned all of these from different sites, at, like Auto Trader. I like that one of them, she has a comment um, in there that, like, Jeff really isn't going to like this photo, this this uh, car. But so keeping that in mind and, and as a way of organization, um, what I love is something that Four Seasons recently did. So. Um, Four Seasons is taking advantage of the fact that travelers are already using Pinterest to search for and bookmark ideas for their vacation. And so what they've come up with is um, a way that people wanting to receive expert advice from a Four Seasons rep create a board with um, the title of Pin, Pack, and Go, and then comment on Four Seasons' original pin. Um, that then allows them to be collaborators on that board. And so a Four Seasons expert joins in and offers up suggestions. So essentially, it's an online concierge service before this person's even booked their trip. And it offers really a unique and individualized connection with the brand. And so my vision for that is something even at a dealership level where you could help customers accessorize their vehicle. Every dealership is looking to increase accessory sales. This would be a great way to do it. Um, you could post pictures of other vehicles that have um, that kind of equipment or even just offer service tips. So again, um, resources of how they could research um, the the price of the vehicle, you know, the best trade in value, all of those. So again, a great way to get that kind of engagement, but then to build that brand and become a resource for your customer as well. And April, I know that you're all over Pinterest too, because we're constantly sharing pins and pictures and funny things that we find. So do you find that you use Pinterest as a way to organize yourself? 
Well, one, I mean, organizational is relative. I think I'm always trying to organize, and I don't think I'm ever getting anything accomplished. Uh, but no, one of the, I mean, the, one of the things that interests me about Pinterest, one, because I'm such a visual person, it, it really helps to see what, I, what I'm looking for, especially since uh, I'm looking for a new car. As like a consumer, the first time you're looking at for a new car is very interesting because I'm looking at a, uh, a completely new type of car for me. So it is really it's great for me to be able to put what my interest levels like side by side and be able to flip through and see that the comparisons because you don't always notice it either live or when you're jumping from side to side. But when you're right. unable to go, oh, look at this headlight, look, look at this door, look at this. Uh, but more so, as much as I like the way things work functionally, you know me, I always try to bring it back to. Uh, what can I track and what can I not track? And so when uh, I, I don't know if dealers know this, but uh, Pinterest actually has one of the most elaborate tracking systems because none of the pictures can be added manually to Pinterest. They need to be shared from a different source site. And so that source site uh, gets recorded onto Pinterest. Every time people share that pin or it gets repinned by other people, then you get to start seeing almost like a, the quantity of like a vehicle detail page. You get to see the interest level in that picture. And that will start to tell you a lot about tracking and trending, just the way Davium does with being able to see what's about to be uh, hot in the market by how many people are looking at a particular vehicle. You might start to see that this either image or this particular model or this product release is either favored by women or shared more often. And then uh, not to mention, obviously, all those retweets are and on the people's pages, so you start to see how many people might right. be in the market to buy new cars. So I, I like that aspect of it. Great point. Not, not to mention, uh, I, it always allows me to feel like I'm validated and thinking I'm funny when I pin something and then you repin it, then it's that validated <laughs> <laughs> I'm funny. It's it the personal ego stroke, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so speaking of uh, well, trackability, one of the things people always ask me, well, when I say people, I really mean my husband. He comes up to me frequently. He's like, I don't get hashtags. <laughs> and so uh, now as his mockery, he uses hashtags in his sentences. He's like, <laughs> hashtag took out the trash. <laughs> That's really not what we use it for. But. So one of the things I, I, I know that dealers love is being competitive. This is a, uh, We get into this field because we love I mean, not only engaging with people and being in the moment, but we love that fire in our belly when uh, we're, we're either close to a deal or we're it's a Saturday fifth or we're up to win this or we're going to be top of the month. So we also love uh, putting that out to our consumers and doing like contests and sweepstakes and, and sometimes it's, it's hard to try to figure out like what, I know that there's this belief that consumers don't believe that they, the prize is real or they're really going to get a car. So one of the things that I've seen with contesting is one, they engaging the people that love your brand the most and, and, and getting them out there sharing on your behalf in very easy ways and making them excited. Very similar to uh, the Nasty Gal, and, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, Hit Bake, where they're highlighting their customers. Their customers are generating content on their behalf. So I actually just added this slide last night because I, was, uh, I, I just arrived in New York and I had heard about this campaign. I was really interested about it. And New York really wanted to have a, you know, a tourist campaign for New York. And instead of seeking out a big ad agency and creating a campaign, they utilized people that were either in New York or around New York to post pictures or favorite pictures or videos of New York with the hashtag, we love this city. And what hashtags allow them to do is be able to track the success of this particular phrase. And so then the winner was able to get a free trip to New York to get to someone else that they could fly in and, and see family and stuff. But uh, the trackability aspect, I think, is one thing that we overlook as, with social media because it's, people start to think that they, it's money that they're spending out in the world and they're like, oh, well, well they're going to have to contribute it to branding that it's not really part of sales. So uh, one of the ways that you can track like things like hashtags are there's like a lot of analytic programs out there, but like this one with hash tracking, I, I tend to use TweetReach, but it just shows that the scalability of the interest level of this particular hashtag. And one of the things that we've been talking about with social media is, and Kate and I had this discussion when we were talking about budgets, one of our questions was going to be how much of your budget is allocated towards social media. And it was interesting because we had this meeting at Facebook about two months ago, and they were talking about it's no longer social media is its own separate form of media. 
it is just now media. This is just, it, it's a predominant way to get in front of consumers. It's just now we're trying to figure out how can we get this quickly creative, how can we get our attention, how can it be tracked and monetized. And there are ways to do it. And I think that when people start to separate their budgets out to traditional and digital and then digital to social, it's just really lost opportunity because there are all these ways to gain customer trust. Agreed. Well said. You're, I like how she doesn't control me. Let me. She doesn't trust me with the button controlling. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not allowed to have control here. And so another way to really get in front of people is uh, we were we saw another presenter, uh, Joel Mitchell, who uh, really talked about, about using marketing through utilitarian marketing, making it useful. We need if you're going to do something, provide a service. It's no longer doing something just for the sake of being catchy. If you're going to build an app or a game, make it useful. In this case, this was Mini Cooper in New Zealand, and uh, they wanted to not only support uh, the Humane Society or or dogs at home that Mini chipped in to uh, participate. So they taught three dogs how to drive Mini Coopers, and they they drove them around the track, and they made this campaign: dogs this smart deserve a home. And so, it, it everybody at the dealership, I'm sure, has a thing that they're interested in, a passion, something they're behind. I'm sure the dealership is contributing money to different organizations. What a great way to have like the community involvement, not to mention it, it really brings the emotional part back to the purchase. Everybody knows people buy from people, and people want their money to go towards good people, good companies. And by utilizing some of your interest in your philanthropic uh, activities, like you're able to turn it into something that people enjoy viewing. There was a, a dealer in Minneapolis not that long ago that had a really passionate political cause uh, that was really personal to his heart. And one of the things that he did was he was providing free car wraps uh, to be able for anybody that also wanted to support this cause to get to come to the dealership to get this wrap installed on their cars and show their report, uh, their uh, support. It got like so much activity and buzz, he ended up on like Channel 9 News, not only for his cause, but for his dealership uh, doing the rap as well. So it, it's a great way to be able to make this on a local level. Another thing that I noticed about um, when I was kind of looking outside, first we started looking outside of automotive and then I started looking at automotive but maybe outside the U.S. <laughs> to see what other people are doing. Uh, and this was Chevy in Brazil. They uh, created a program with uh, tow truck companies that when people would break down at the side of the road, they partnered with them that they would go and pick up the driver so that they didn't either have to ride back with the tow truck driver or uh, obviously they have to call to get a ride. So one, it was useful. It was, they were there to be able to give them a nice ride. But two, the, the person could choose to drive the car themselves. So the, the person thinking what a great service this is, but think about it, you literally just pick up the next person in the market to buy a car. If the car is either broke and it's not fixable, or if it was an accident, uh, that car is now its first test drive. You can't get any more useful than that. And I, I don't see why uh, dealers couldn't connect with local tow truck drivers to say, hey, we'd like to offer this. Or I know some dealers that have done the, uh, like on New Year's, where they would pay to have people drive or drove home, uh, like for, so they wouldn't drink and drive. Um, and then, uh, you know, other other things, or, you know, they would get a, a, a car for their birthday to be able to drive around for fun, you know. Uh, I know that uh, I, was, I never really thought I would be a person to look at SUVs, and then uh, I had to borrow one from a dealer while I was in uh, Kansas City, and I was like, wow, I love this, this is great. So one of the best ways to... Uh, get somebody in the market to buy a new car, but put them in a car that they don't need first and get them to fall in love with it. So it's, it's really the whole idea of a loaner car or the try before you buy or the rentals that, that dealers um, are currently doing, but kind of taking it to the next level. So certainly um, we're, we're always impressed with the, the latest and greatest model and the new technology, and we're convinced that if somebody has an opportunity to come in and test drive it, They'll fall in love with it and have that emotional connection. So again, a great way to get more customers um, in your vehicle and maybe put them in market. Okay, um, I've been quiet up until now. 
That uh-huh. was a great idea. Because <laughs> no, at no point is a person more frustrated with their car than when they're stranded by the side of the road and have to call a tow truck. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. You would be the hero in no time. That is stinking brilliant. <laughs> okay, I'll be quiet. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Brazil. Yeah. Um, so, so really my last... Um, uh, idea is off of Dollar Shave Club, and for those of you not familiar with Dollar Shave Club, um, it's a company that delivers fresh razors to your door rather than selling them at a typical retail chain. And if you haven't watched their commercial, I would encourage you to do so. Um, most of you are on mute right now, so feel free to play it. It really is just that funny. It's had over 11 million views, and um, and has become, you know, a multi-million dollar company because it's it's gone so viral. And um, so for those of you that have seen it, it's probably because someone has shared it with you, which is kind of giving it an endorsement of sorts. Um, people aren't coming across it because they're doing a Google search for razors. People are seeking out this information. And um, thinking about like what you can learn from Dollar Shave Club and how that applies to your own business, I think what really resonates with a lot of people is is that it's authentic. Um, people were already really skeptical about paying $19 a cartridge, um, so they brought it up and they actually leveraged that skepticism. And, and if there's anything true about our industry, it's that customers are very skeptical about us, right? Um, and so how, how can you turn that and use it to your advantage? And I think that you can do it certainly with humor, as they've done here. So calling out the obvious concerns really takes away some of the power. So um, you know, maybe just letting them know, yeah, we want you to buy a car and probably a warranty as well. So it's a great model for um, kind of putting it back to a customer, talking to them in a very real way, and um, presenting your side of it. So um, it, it was also my way of being able to drop an F-bomb into um, a webinar. So it was kind of twofold for me. But I would really encourage you guys to, to watch this. Did you tell everybody that it was a national Talk Like a Pirate thing? I did. I, I did do that. So, so I've gotten my two things out of the way. I'm very, very happy. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for that, uh, for yeah. dropping the F-bomb that wasn't actually there. You're welcome. You're welcome. Mm-hmm. Pirates don't say the F word, by the way. <laughs> no, they don't. They don't. <laughs> how, many, how many pirates do you know, I mean, really? <laughs> so uh, what goes better with pirates? Fear. <laughs> so um, <laughs> this is a this is a company called Full Head Fear, and when you go to their website, it is a teddy page for a teddy bear, Full Head Teddy Bear. And so at first you look at it and you're a little confused, but then when you start reading through, it gives you these like little hints, these little clues. It says you know shop where nothing is what it seems, or have a look. But after you spend a little bit of time on the site, or you're getting ready to leave, a uh, pop up comes up. Actually, can go back one real quick? Mm-hmm. A pop-up comes up and it says, don't you think you wasted enough time already? Pull the window, uh, you're, you're getting warm. And then when they slide it over, then the real website is released. So I just thought this was fun and thoughtful and interesting and really kind of played to the nature of their name. I mean, obviously, the Full Fed Act was the... Uh, uh, during the prohibition time, and what better way to sell a beer would, would be to make it undercover, speakeasy style, but uh, digital. But you know, some of it is, is that we have we're so serious about our branding, we're so serious. And, and I know Dale runs a, a fantastic website company, so I, I would never talk against their tons of uh, expertise that they've done with like conversion rate. And, and they are right. You obviously don't want to scare a customer off by it being too difficult for them to get information, and that's why they're website people and for marketing people. But I mean, these would be great things to do for your web, or to do for like a, a microsite, or for your Facebook, or or even you know try to push the bar. You know, talk to the owners, uh, Ali and Beer, and see if you can get them to uh, to do a popover that is more something fun or interesting, or you know, and try different things. Try to see if you can get people guessing, get their get their attention in a different way, and just have fun with it, and not take 
everything maybe so seriously. If your customers want to have fun with it, and this is an opportunity for you to be able to have fun with it. So speaking of which, you know, Kate and I, you know, scoured, you know, the internet and different companies, but uh, I know we were also curious about how you guys get your information. Kate, did, did we have a poll question? Yeah, we do. Yes, yes, we do. <laughs> okay, audience, time for another poll question. This one we're really, really excited about. We want to know who provides the content for your social media. And for this one, please, of course, just select one of the following answers. So, do you outsource it? You hire somebody else to take care of the, the, you know, finding the content for your social media. We have that answer. Do you have a single person at the dealership? who is entrusted with coming up with new and interesting content and being witty and charming online. Hey, if that's the case, let us know that. Do you rely on your employees to generate interesting topics that you think people in the area are curious about? Or maybe you don't have a formalized process at all when it comes to the content for your social media. Or maybe you just don't know, it's not your responsibility, and you're not quite sure who takes care of the content for your social media or how that just magically winds up online. Either way, let us know. The votes are coming in now, but once we get a majority of the votes, we'll close the poll, we'll share the results, and then ladies, we're going to see what stays very savvy dealer on audience thinks about content for social media. Uh, I'm curious though, did you ask this because you wanted to see if there was something else happening out there, or do you already know what the answer is? You already know what the answer is to this question. No, although uh, I guess oh, honestly, we just wanted to get up the next point. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'll tell you what, we're going to close this poll because almost everyone's voted now. Audience, thank you so much for your incredible participation in today's webinar. We do appreciate it. Let's close this poll and share the results. Well, an incredible, overwhelming majority, 67% of today's audience said that they do, in fact, have a single person in-house who takes care of the content for their social media, 67%. Now, 15% says that they don't have a formal process. 10% of today's audience said that they outsource it. 8% said that they rely on their employees to generate interesting topics. And there isn't anyone on here who's going to admit that they don't know where it comes from. <laughs> So is that kind of what you were thinking, that 67% of today's dealerships have somebody in-house, one person in-house who takes care of that? That's two-thirds. I mean, I, I, think it, I think it's realistic because, one, like I said, it's dealership budgets for, for social media are still pretty slim, like I said, due to the mentality that they are still separating it. Uh, even still, I think digital is still completely underutilized compared to the proof that we show of how many people. I, I think that the, it's still, it's getting better, we're seeing more and more people, but it, I can see from a financial aspect. The two, I mean, this is, it, it, this is the answer we wanted, but with some caveats, right? So one of the, uh, the reasons that we ask this question is, is because, you know, dealers struggle for good information. They struggle to get uh, branding out there in a unique way, but they also like, sometimes struggle with motivation, self-motivation and employee motivation. Uh, we all know that, I mean, honestly, when I was a salesperson, I was a mediocre salesperson. I'm not going to lie about that. I, I knew I could make good money selling, you know, X amount of cars. I didn't work all that hard. Uh, I was a higher grossing person than a volume person, but there was just something, I, I guess I just knew. I knew I'd sell X amount of cars. I knew and if I only, if I was under that number, then I'd get my butt in gear the last couple of days of the month. But my motivation didn't necessarily come from all the right places. But uh, this, this uh, company, Zappos, uh, the reason I picked this was, this was actually one of the most deciding factors for me to leave the company that I had left and start my own company. And uh, I went to Zappos and we do a tour of their facility right in Vegas. So anybody that's going to the fall conferences, uh, I'll go with you even. I, I go again. Uh, take a tour of the Zappos facility. It's totally free. And what you do is you, you get to walk through and you get to see what uh, Tony Hesh, the, the owner, created. And, and he's got a whole book called Selling Happiness and another one that's like the uh, Employee Culture Book. So he built an entire company around happy employees. Happy employees generating great information, great vibe, great. I mean, what better 
advocates or what better advertisement does a dealership have or their brand have than the people that live it every single day. And so the best thing that he did was he empowered them to be able to have creative workspaces. He gave them uh, great benefits. He has a lot of fun like promotions and, and things to keep them in there. And they're a call center. I mean, they are honestly, they're selling overstock shoes from other companies, and they're primarily a call center. That's typically like the least fun job ever is to sit there and hear, you know, take phone orders and hear complaints. And they have the least churn in the industry and have just, I mean, it buys with so much positive energy. So getting those people, getting your salespeople and, and the people wrapped in, I wanted to create a culture like that. I wanted people to be so invested that they would want to share their brand. I know that the, the hard part that dealers struggle with being able to let their salespeople or their customers be able to social media on the, the store of the half is trackability and a little bit of uh, being able to facilitate to make sure the right messages are going out. And so there's now companies that will help, one, track uh, uh, what your salespeople are putting out there, but also help you syndicate it. So if the dealership is doing something on a social media level at that single point person, that, that information needs to be syndicated to all the salespeople so they can stay apprised of what's happening or what feedback, and then they can share with their network. Uh, or it gives you the ability to track your salespeople and how, what they're putting out there on an information level. And then there's even companies, there's, um, I think one was like Buddy with like 3Ds or something, and then there's this one, Neville, uh, which was recently noted that it allows you to make it much more of a dashboard tracking system so than the salespeople, the person that maybe creates the most engaging content about the dealership or has the most followers or the most uh, shared information, you can reward them there. So getting people behind your brand and making it about people connecting with people, all these ideas are, are extremely easy to implement and really affordable. But it brings everything back to like how can we connect with this generation in an interesting way that cuts through all the clutter and makes it makes you stand out. Do you want to go over the takeaways, April? Do you want to take it away? <laughs> Uh, sure. So uh, the takeaways are, are really hoping that you uh, emulate the, the same kind of enthusiasm that Kate and I got while you know either pursuing some of these ideas or, or some of these uh, people that we talked about. Seth Godin was the one that I saw at Driving Sales Presidents Club where he really talked about generating emotion. He talked about how Betty Crocker did it for years by Betty Crocker not even being a real person, but her icon of her face makes people feel like that home, that, you know, it, it's the feel-good feeling. So generating more emotion into things you do and, and remembering that uh, this is a, a great industry and it's something that, you know, every, we all choose to be a part of. And so come at it with the, uh, the same enthusiasm that you want your, your salespeople, your, uh, your managers, every single person that buys a car from you, you want them to have that feeling and be eager to portray it out. Uh, and also recognize that traditional marketing has changed. This is uh, this is the new way that we obtain information. We get it in six seconds spurts and you know uh, 60 character tweets, Pinterest and Vine and I mean it sounds like a lot of new concepts, but the great part about it is is it, it's become extremely digestible really fast. I picked up Vine and, and did my first Vine video the other day with my dog Lucky because. Like he's addicted to a little woobie blanket, but I figured out the whole program in, in minutes. And so uh, the people that are producing these things are making it very easy for you guys to adapt these and, and work them into your process. And then think about how you're providing useful services and, and what true reason you're giving somebody to contact you and to say, what am I putting back? What am I get, how am I really affecting uh, the, the people that are looking to buy a car? Like what am I giving to them other than a car? Give them a service. And then don't make excuses. Get going. Start to take one of these ideas. Take a half an idea and move that one forward and uh, just do something different that you can be proud of. Well said. Thanks. <laughs> Eliana, do you want to, um, to give something away or to ask the experts? Oh, uh, yes. Audience, thank you so much. April and Kate, thank you so much. That was fabulous.
fabulous presentation. I got a lot of great ideas. Now I wish I owned a dealership. Um, we are going to get to questions from our audience very shortly. So, Kate, April, take a breather, get something to drink. We're going to get to those questions in just a minute. But audience, we have a little bit of fun for you right now. If you missed my announcement at the very top of the presentation, I announced that our good friends at Kate Frost Inc. and Digital Rain Inc. are giving away not one, but two fantastic prizes today on the webinar. First, one of you lucky webinar atten attendees is going to win a recorded social media evaluation and free recommendations provided by Kate Frost Inc. And then after that, we're going to give away another prize to one of you who's going to win an analytics evaluation for measuring traffic and social ROI provided by Digital Rain Inc. So, all you have to do is answer a simple question about today's presentation, and the first one to write in the correct response is going to win one of those great prizes. So, get to your keyboards, get your fingers all nimbled up and ready to go. Usually it's the fastest typer who wins, so get ready. And good luck, everyone. This first prize is going to be for that social media evaluation with three recommendations provided by Kate Frost, Inc. Here's the question, everyone. Good luck. The question is, how old is the owner of Nasty Gal, Sofia Amoroso? Oh, my goodness. We already have a winner. You guys are great. Uh, you know what? When Kate said it, they were awesome. When Kate said it, she said it so quickly, I was like, there's no way, no, and no one's going to get this right. It just went over everyone's heads. But we have a winner, and our winner is Danielle Bennett with the correct answer of 28. Danielle Bennett. Congratulations, Danielle. Please write on in and let me know what dealership you're from so we can give you a proper congratulations. Let me write your name down. Danielle Bennett. Congratulations. She is from AutoLine Pre-Owned. And she also said yay, just in case that makes a difference to you, Kate. Yay. <laughs> Maybe she's an nasty gal. We don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It was so funny because when, when April was saying you should take a tour of Zappos, I'm like, do they have shoes there? Yes, I'd like to take a tour. Okay, well, congratulations, Danielle. Don't worry, everyone. We have some more prizes to give away. Actually, right now, we are going to give away the one-hour analytics evaluation and for measuring traffic and social ROI with Digital Rain Inc. So get ready. You have another chance to win another awesome prize. Danielle, you can sit this one out, my love. You're already a winner today. So everyone, here we go. Get to your keyboards. Get ready, and good luck. The question is, it's a hard question, by the way. What is the name of the beer company that had the fake website? What's the name of the beer company that had the fake website? I know it was hard. It probably is hard to spell. But if you can come oh, my God, somebody has the right answer. Somebody was paying attention. They actually spelled it right, too. I can't believe it. <laughs> Congratulations. Actually, we had a few people who had the right answer. But the, the first one to write in the correct response is a gentleman named Tommy Hazelwood. Tommy Hazelwood, congratulations. You are today's winner. I'm writing your name down. Tommy, if you could write on in and let me know what dealership you are from. Tommy, as well as a few other very, very smart people, had the correct answer. It was Senador Volstead Beer. Tommy Hazelwood is from Panama City, Toyota. So congratulations, Tommy Hazelwood. You are a winner today, as well as Danielle Bennett. Another one of our winners. Of course, we want to congratulate both of today's winners. And, of course, want to thank Kate Frost and April Rain for their incredible generosity. So thank you so much, everyone, for playing along. I also want to let you know um, that you might have missed this in the beginning of the webinar, too, but our fantastic presenters today are giving you the inside track to win a really exclusive, I mean, really cool ultimate prize. It is VIP access to the exclusive exotic race car and innovative focus group experience in Vegas. And it's prior to driving sales executive summit. And this prize is valued at over $1,000. And it's going to be hosted by car gurus. So you're going to be able to get into an exotic race car and drive around the track and stuff. It's going to be so super cool. And 
to win, you have to go to the link that's in your chat feature, read the contest rules. It's by invitation only to even enter the contest. So you are being officially invited to enter the contest, and Car Gurus is going to uh, select the winners in a little while. We're not going to announce any winners today, of course, for this, because this, this prize is by Car Gurus. But we're going to give you the inside track, be one of the first people to apply for the invitation. So go to that link, read the contest rules. Good luck, everyone. That is such a cool prize. April, did you have anything to add about that contest? I mean, if, if somebody was really interested, uh, definitely either email or, or fill out that form. But yeah, it, it's actually going to be the first of a really fun and creative. It's more of a focus group. What we wanted to do was we wanted to get together 15 of the most innovative people in the industry and really have people have like a really thoughtful discussion about what 2014 is going to look like from an e-commerce standpoint. The race part is actually just because uh, we have read like the more that you can get, obviously your blood pumping and energy up and endorphins going, that really spurs creative thought. So that was uh, to get kind of the ball rolling with about having great camaraderie and experience and fun and, and networking. And then it's a followed by a lunch hosted by uh, the owner of our gurus, who is also the uh, co-founder uh, co of Travel, um, uh, I'm sorry, TripAdvisor, uh, which is like the largest uh, travel agency site in the country with uh, like 50 million monthly weeks. So it's, uh, it's going to be a really fun day. So if they're, if they're interested, they should follow that link or reach out to me uh, via email or something. Perfect. Thank you so much. It sounds really, really like a fun event. Am I eligible? <laughs> Probably not. But <laughs> um, I do. Uh, we're going to get to questions from the audience right now. So if you have any questions for April and Kate, please send them on in. We're going to do questions right now. And by the way, our winners, Danielle Bennett and Tommy Hazelwood, you're going to hear directly from Kate Frost, Inc. and Digital Rain, Inc., regarding your prizes. All right, so thank you so much for that. Let's get to our first question. Kate, if you wouldn't mind putting it on that pretty page with your, sure. your pictures on it. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Beautiful. And they are so generous with their contact information, everyone. So if you want to reach out to either one of them and dive deeper into some of these awesome ten and a half ideas. How did you get ten and a half ideas? <laughs> ideas that they presented today. Please do so. They're so super cool and so super nice, and they will definitely help any of you dealers out there who ask for it. Okay. Kate, April, you ready? Yeah. Okay, first question comes to us from John. He says, do you know of a dealer that has successfully used any of these ideas. Kate, April, either one of you? Yeah, so well, I know that um, I'll, I'll take the first part in April if you have something to chime in. Um, certainly the idea about the customer photos and the Spotify playlists, um, I've done those for several dealerships. Um, I'll post on my Facebook page um, later today as part of the resource links so that you can check out either the cover photo but also see the Spotify playlist and how we've embedded that into a blog and if you need help with that or details or you're interested uh, just let me know because um, I, it might be a little challenging the first time you do it but um, you know I've, I've got the cliff note version for you. Oh great! April, do you know of anyone else? Uh, all the people that Kate does control for. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, one, uh, she, I know that uh, she's done some really, Kate's done some really innovative things with uh, Pinterest for her clients, and I mean, that's where I was really starting to see, uh, you know, that, that being utilized. Uh, I would say a lot of it's in the, like, the community involvement part. Uh, I know there's dealers from Minneapolis that do uh, um, hunger, um, uh, like the, the food drives and things like that, but they make it really creative. They've created like uh, micro sites for it and really built that into the brand. I know that uh, there's a store uh, in White Bear where they have a gigantic White Bear with a logo, and people when they are there, it's become like their icon. They also did a version of like the Harlem Shake, so that was kind of a fun. It was like the dealership version of the Harlem Shake, and then I see there's like a lot of like. B2B great automotive solutions. Uh, most people don't even know this, but uh, one of the companies I work with, Edmunds.com, 
they actually have a uh, toll-free call support line, not for dealers necessarily, but for consumers. They, any consumer in the country can like call and ask any automotive question like that they choose. Like they can just call and ask like, how do I get an oil or how do I do this? It's just a support for anybody that has any automotive questions. Even if what Edmonds has to do is Google the answer, they will provide support for that person, and, and it makes it a useful service. So. Wow, that's really cool. Okay, that is pretty cool. Okay, uh, let's get to some more of these great questions from our audience. Um, April, while I have you, uh, sh let's see, we wanted to say hi. Uh, personal hello comes in from Ted Bloomberg, formerly of carsoup.com. He wanted to write on in and tell you that he's here on the webinar and he wanted you to know. <laughs> Hello. Oh, fun. Yeah, uh, Ted uh, was our director of media at uh, CarSoup. Like we worked together years ago. That's awesome. <laughs> I also wanted to give you this great question that came into us from Joseph. He says, "These are all great ideas!" Exclamation mark. By the way, um, he says, "But I'm strapped for time at the dealership. Where should I begin?" April. Strapped for time at. So, I mean, we all are, right? I mean, Kate and I, the, the, the goal here is improvement. Kate and I constantly joke around, like, you know, I'll jab her. I'm like, what are you doing with your website? And then she reports, she's like, why haven't you set up your YouTube channel? And, and so we get it. I mean, we're, we're in the same boat as everybody else. We only have so much time and so, much, so many resources. And uh, so I would say take the things that you can implement the easiest, uh, but that has the greatest effect. So uh, the, the two that I think that were probably the, the best were at the beginning and at the end. If there were two core concepts that I think people should have, one is you need to have, I mean, obviously happy customers and you need to have happy employees. I mean, if you, if you figure out a way to make those two things happen, that alone is, is a business and a brand. So finding things that your customers want to gravitate toward and finding ways to motivate your salespeople that they want to project that. And those things don't take a lot of time or money. I think that's great. I would echo that answer. Well, Joseph, I hope that uh, that was actually a really good answer. April. Um, I hope that answer helps you out. Uh, different Joe. We have a lot of Joes on today's webinar, by the way. Different Joe wrote in. Um, when you, uh, earlier on in the presentation, I believe, Kate, it was during your, uh, I think, second um, idea, Joe wrote in that he can't pull off some of these ideas because his hands are tied with compliance. So, Kate, April, is there any anything you can do to help somebody who is tied down by compliance, who doesn't have the flexibility to have that kind of fun in their marketing? I, I guess it would... Um of course, depends on the brand since compliance um, differs from manufacturer to manufacturer. Um, and, you know, I, I think that that it's a real concern for all of us. Um, I, I think my second idea had to do with Spotify and playlists. I don't know how that would necessarily um, break, uh, you know, any kind of rules, but um, I guess you just have to be selective in, in the music that you are choosing. <laughs> um, so, you know, if, if he wants to, to reach out to either one of us, I'm sure that um, we, can, we can help him or talk him through a solution and um, get him to use some innovative ideas because, of course, the manufacturer is coming up with new ideas all the time. It shouldn't be any different for um, you at the dealership level. Yeah, Joe actually wrote back in, and he said he's with Nissan, and uh, they, they are so very Nissan. strict. Yeah, they are pretty strict. Yeah. I know they're strict on, on websites, too. So Yeah. Well, and and certainly reach out to me. It's, it's funny because some of these manufacturers, I mean, social media is the wild, wild west, and then, you know, Infinity, Nissan, they're looking at every single tweet you send out as well. So um, I guess... The, the best thing to do is to run it through compliance before you launch it so that you don't get a strike or a nasty gram. Right, right, right. Okay, Joe, I highly recommend you reach out to one of these wonderful women and uh, if they can't help you, I just don't know if any, oh, he said he's going to. Okay, never mind then, I'll stop. <laughs> Good luck, Joe. Joe's a nice guy. I met him over at the um, 
uh, at AutoCon uh, okay. a couple of weeks back. He's a super nice guy. You'll like him. Okay, uh, another question. Different Joe. This one's actually Joey, okay? <laughs> I love my Joey. And he says, I haven't heard much discussion about trying to reach people on social media in Spanish as well as English. Do you have any thoughts, trials, tribulations, etc.? Any question, any suggestions we have for Joey? I think that's really interesting because it's, um, you know, I'm based in Central Florida and so in South Florida, uh, you know, it's, it's definitely predominant and um, much more of a concern than maybe, you know, Central Alabama or something like that. But um, I know that part of Southeast Toyota's um, uh, social media efforts are that you can opt in to have your status updates, possibly even tweets, um, sent in Spanish. And so if that's, that's part of your audience, I say, yeah, absolutely, let's go for it. In the same way that most dealerships have a in Espanol tab on their their website, um, people are are more comfortable when they're speaking in their native language, and it's more of a connection. So I say I'm all for it. Great idea, Joey. I hope that helps you out. You got you got a thumbs up over here from these good folks. So uh, wish you the best of luck on that, Joey. We're gonna get to this next question from Adil. He's got a, actually a couple really great questions, but we're going to get to this first question. He says, uh, how much time should be allocated towards each social media platform like Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, etc.? Is there a magic bullet, Kate, April, that you would recommend allocating towards each social media platform? Or do certain platforms you think maybe need a little bit more attention than others? Well, um I'll take it and then April if you want to chime in. I think that, you know, uh, all things considered, there's there's some social media platforms that are more of the 600-pound gorilla than others. But um, my best advice would be to, to get a software system that, you know, is like a hoot suite or something that's free that you can load in all of these different channels so that you can have Facebook and Twitter and Google+. Plus, um, you know, linked in all in one area so that when you go to do a status update, it's going across all of your platforms and you're not having to log in and out of each one because that can be really time consuming. Um, having that type of technology or software also gives you the ability to do mass scheduling. So if you knew that Tuesday was a slower day and you know, the internet department, you don't get as many leads, um, that would be a good time to set aside, um, you know, that hour so that you could get those, um, those posts ready for the week. Um, and, and some of them, you know, if you know that today is National Talk Like a Pirate Day, you can schedule <laughs> that in advance as well. Um, one thought that I do have regarding, um, and, and to go back to Joey's question um, about you know, other languages is something that we did in Atlanta where there's a, a high number of Korean speakers. You can target through Facebook a certain language. So if you wanted ads to run just in front of those people, you know, a Spanish um, ad in front of a Spanish audience, um, it is one of the ways that you can segment through their tools. So um, it might be something to, to look for in the future. But, um, you know, with, with social media, I would say that it's, it is one of those ongoing efforts. It's not like, well, I, I'm done with that. I set up my Facebook page. It, it is that daily or weekly activity that needs to happen. So um, the beauty is we've got a lot of content all over the web. Um, Pinterest is a great place to get a lot of content. Um, because it's so visual and that does well across all of the different platforms. So you can do searches. If you're a Buick store, do a search on Pinterest for old Buicks, and that can be your throwback Thursday, Facebook tweet, you know, all of, all of that at once while you're pinning it. So um, I have some tips if, if they want to reach out to me on that, and we can address it more specifically, or I could help them set up their, their Hootsuite account. Great. April, did you have anything to add to, to Kate's answer? Have we officially lost April? <laughs> I, I 
don't know. Did we lose April? Oh my gosh, we did. We lost April. Oh, we're just ignoring us. Yeah. No, no, I think we actually lost her. Okay, it's the Kate Frost show from now on. I hope you're okay with that. <laughs> Fabulous. Okay, well, let's keep going. Um, you know, this one was interesting. This one came to us from our friend Kelly Wilson. She said, um, we brought this up and the owner is super scared. And so I wrote back to her and I said, what the heck are you talking about? I can't wait. <laughs> Well, she said the owner is scared of being blunt and taking on perceptions of car dealers and salesmen. So you know how April was talking about, right. uh, you know, exactly, going head on with that. So, I mean, it, it, I guess there's two questions here. Is there a way to do it where... It's where it's not so offensive. Yeah. I, I, think, I think it comes down to um, the delivery, right? I mean, it's why some people are great at telling jokes and why other people aren't. So it really comes down to the delivery and also making sure that it's pretty tongue-in-cheek. I'll give an example of um, uh, a video that I saw that I thought was hilarious and very much in the same vein of Dollar Shave Club or any Will Ferrell skit you've seen, and that was, they played it at Google, and it's for Hoover Toyota, which I believe is in Alabama, and they have this red carpet treatment, and it's the GM um, who's doing the ad, and it's hilarious. I mean, it starts off, and he's like curling a dumbbell, and, you know, it's so funny, and um, it's had over 25,000 views, but take a look at that and get some ideas, you know, uh, again, we were talking about like looking outside of the industry, but, but there's dealers now who, who have already done that and then put together the final product that you can show, and I know that people are scared to be the first one out there, so Kelly, take a look at that and maybe that's um, a good example of, of how you can kind of uh, be a little more tongue-in-cheek and not so harsh and cutting. Okay. Well, Kelly said that the owner is going to be with her at Digital Dealer next month. So we'll all get together. Perfect. You know, we'll, we'll have him shoot back a couple tequilas or something, and we'll get them right. all, all right. <laughs> ready to go and <laughs> take off the shirt and do dumbbell presses with us. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous. Kelly, great question. Thank you so much. Okay. Let's get to this next question from David. He says, uh, can you ask them to talk about syndicated social media? Kate, do you have any anything? syndicated social media meaning um, hiring a, a a third party to do that? I, I believe that's what he's referring to. Okay, yeah, I think that it um, you know is with social media because there is a lot of effort that goes into it, and that there's so many moving parts. Um, and maybe not the most direct ROI, it can be really time consuming to manage in-house. So, um, and I guess the fact that I own a social media company, I would say it's not a bad idea to outsource um, because of the time factor that's involved, but also I can't tell you how many situations you run into where the former internet manager um, set everything up and then quit and is mad and now there's all these multiple listings, especially with Google Plus now being so important and, and tied to your Google Places listing, it becomes even um, more critical. So yeah, I think it, it, you just have to find a company that's in line with your overall vision. Maybe not everybody um, you know, wants to, to have the same pictures of, of kitties on um, their Facebook page, but there's certainly enough companies out there that um, provide a, a scope of services that you can find one that makes sense for, for your store and then just, um, most of them are turnkey solutions, but if you want to be involved in it, I, I think some of my best customers are ones that send me pictures of, you know, owner's clinics and various parades that they're participating in so that it still has that local feel because the beauty of, of social media is that it gives you an opportunity to have that local voice. Thank you so much. Great answer, Kate. And Dave, I hope that helps you out. Oh, he already wrote in and said thank you. Okay. Um, we have just, you know, four or so questions left, Kate, so I would really love to get to these and then close sure. up the webinar as quickly as possible, all right? Sure. So going back to our friend, Adil. Adil says, we post tons of pictures and videos on YouTube, 
Facebook, on our blog, but never get any responses from viewers. So it looks like they're hurting on engagement, Kate. Even okay. though our average reach to organic traffic is anywhere from 200 to 300 views. Do you have any advice or thoughts on that? Sure. Um, and, and if he wants to, um, you know, it's, it's something that I'd really like to look at personally as well. So have him send me um, the link or get in touch so that we can do that. But one of the things that I've found um, is just because you might have 1,000 or 2,000 fans, if you went dormant for a while and nobody was managing it, um, Facebook has an algorithm, of course, that, um, you know, people that you engage with and talk to on a more regular basis are the ones that show up in your news feed. So if, if you haven't had engagement for a long time and now all of a sudden you start posting, well, it could be that those fans aren't necessarily seeing that post. Um, so it might be a great time to do that um, boost post for $5 just so that you have that bigger audience, you start getting that engagement. Um, so it's a little bit of a, a jump start for you. Um, and then we can also look at, at the content. I know that's something that's really successful even from a dealership standpoint or business to business um, are those you know throwback Thursdays. Um, so if, if you have a brand that um, works well for that, I mean really all of them do. Um, that seems to be a day of the week where we see the largest um, engagement. So we can, we can take a look at that. But maybe it's, it's a situation where you might have to spend um, a, a small amount of money just to get it going. A deal. I hope that helped you out. But Kate has, of course, invited you to get in touch with her privately after the webinar, and she'll be glad to take a look at what's going on on your Facebook page. He sent me the link, but I'm sure you should probably send the link directly to Kate if that's yep. at all possible. Oh, he said he's going to do that for sure. Okay, great. I look forward to talking to him. Okay, good. Let's get to these last three questions. Next one comes to us from Jimmy. He says, do you suggest putting all of our inventory on Pinterest? Um, so what I would say um, in regards to that is that you should absolutely have individual boards set up for each one of your models um, because it's keyword rich. It's what people are already searching for. So if you're a Toyota dealer, have one on that's called Toyota Camry, Toyota Corolla, Toyota RAV4, and then you can have pictures and videos on there. Within the board description um, is where you would provide a link, a direct deep link into your website's inventory so that you, you do get some of that good SEO juice going on it. Um, with this time of year and the fact that 2014 models are coming out, I would even create boards that say, um, you know, 2014 Toyota Camry, and then you can pin images from there, um, and, and certainly off of your own website. But I don't know that you need to pin every single vehicle. That would be really time consuming. But, but just to have that, that general idea of um, each model being represented is going to help with, with your SEO. I agree with that. Thank you, Kate. Jimmy, I hope that helps you out. He says, excellent. Thank you very much. I love it when guys put smiley faces on there. That's so nice. or, or ask about Pinterest. I love it. <laughs> I know. Me too. Jimmy, good luck with that. Okay, this next question comes to us from Tiandra. I love that name, by the way. Mm -hmm. She says, is it okay to duplicate content across social media platforms, or should we be creating unique posts for each separate audience? And before you answer this, Kate, I just want you to know, it's one of the things that I... I know a lot of people love Twitter because it's 140 characters. It is exactly why I can't stand Twitter because it's only 140 characters. And right. I'm a talker, and I want right. to put as much information as possible. Yeah. So if you can so, have, if you can get the point across in 140 characters, yeah. So should, I think should you duplicate that content across all right. social media platforms? Right. Um, so I think that it depends on um, on a few things. Number one, um, Facebook and Google Plus. I think that they can absolutely be the same message. Um, something that you would put on a blog versus on Facebook, I would say blog because it's a longer format and then just share it across the other platforms, you know, for more information or to listen to our, you know, latest playlist and then have a link to it. Um, 
but with with frequency, we know that we probably don't want to be posting much more than you know one or two times a day on on Facebook. But with Twitter, you have that kind of rapid fire, um, you know, where people are tweeting multiple multiple times a day. So for that, I would say you probably need to come up with three or four tweets a day. But on the other ones, you would want to stick to maybe um, you know one message a day in terms of frequency. But but I think the messaging can can be the same. Um, you know, people tend to be like really on into Facebook or really into LinkedIn or um, you know all of that. If if they start seeing or if you start seeing that your engagement goes way down, you might want to you know mix it up a little bit. But I I personally don't think that it's it's a bad thing to um, to create that uh, across all platforms. Or if you were using Hootsuite, I guess you could take the Monday message on Facebook and. Um, Put it out on Thursday on Twitter, but um, you might be overthinking it and making more work for yourself. Thank you so much. Great information, Kate. Tiandra, I hope that helps. Oh, she already wrote in. Thanks a lot. Very good info. Thank you so much, Tiandra. Thank you for staying. I know we're really running over time. Last question for you, Kate, comes from one of our winners today, Tommy. He says, which social media would you want us to utilize more? What are your thoughts on using LinkedIn? Okay, so it's a twofer, Kate. So which okay. social media do you think dealers need to utilize more? And what do you think um, about I, LinkedIn? I would say the first part um, that Facebook is, you know, the 800-pound gorilla for sure. Um, when I was at Facebook um, two months ago and met with some of the people in, in the automotive field, um, knowing the changes and, and the level of um, information, granular information you can get from their ad tool, you should absolutely dedicate a minimum of $100 a month to, to buying some of those ads. They now have a category um, from Polk Research, and it's called Auto and Tender, and these are people that are on Facebook that Polk believes are going to be in the market to purchase a new vehicle within what? six months. Yeah, so I mean that that's the kind of thing that we spent thousands of dollars um, using that information to send to direct mail campaigns. So the fact that you can do that or upload an Excel spreadsheet from your CRM and Facebook will match the email addresses you have as customers to see if they match against um, a email address that's being used for a Facebook account and then plug your ad into their news feed. That to me is the absolute no-brainer, huge ROI, um, huge reach, minimal dollars and efforts. So Facebook is number one. Um, LinkedIn, I think personally we should all have a LinkedIn profile. It's great. It does really well um, on search results. I see that dealers who have a LinkedIn profile typically see page one results on LinkedIn. That message can be you know, tied into the, the message you're putting out on Facebook. And if you're looking to use it as a recruitment tool, it's really great um, because people are, are starting their job hunt on LinkedIn more and more. So I, I guess it, it depends a little bit on... Um, but can you use... I think Tommy wanted to know, if, can you use LinkedIn for branding, to sell cars, for customer loyalty, for any of that stuff, or is it really just for recruitment? Um, yeah, I, I don't think that we're there yet, or, um, or maybe if, if some dealers are, I'd love to know how they're using it. I've, I've seen a lot of success with my business-to-business -business, um, customers, or if you're going after you know, a fleet manager um, kind of role, but I, I think that otherwise it could just be, be very cluttered. I don't know how many people are actually following a, a brand for a dealership other than employees on LinkedIn. Gotcha. I, you know what? I tend to agree. Tommy, I hope that helps you out. And Kate, thank you so much. This You're was welcome. a fabulous webinar today. I only wish April, <laughs> <laughs> April didn't cut out on us. Yeah. So she I've been checking. Anna. I've been checking. She hasn't come back in. So April, wherever you are, thank you as yeah. well. Um, fabulous, fabulous presentation. Audience, if, you're, if you haven't had the opportunity to reach out to either April or Kate or meet them in person or hear them speak at a conference or anything, believe me, you are missing out. They are fabulous women with so much knowledge and, and very generous with their time and information, and they are just two of the best in the biz. So if you have an opportunity to reach out to them, you definitely should take, 
take the advice and do it. <laughs> All right. So, Kate, I want to thank you again. Hopefully, we'll, you'll be on my webinar again sometime soon. Of course, I want to remind the audience that a link to download a copy of this webinar recording is going to be emailed to you in just a few hours. Please keep it for your reference, and please share it with friends and colleagues. Today's webinar is also going to be posted online within 24 hours, so just go to dealeron.com slash webinars. Click on the link on the right-hand side for on-demand webinars, and on that page you can access any of our webinars. You can also view and register for some of our upcoming webinars, too. And at the conclusion of this webinar, in just a moment, you're going to receive a short survey, so please fill it out because we're always looking for great feedback from our audience. And hey, we're going to random, randomly select a couple of people from all the completed surveys to also win some Google prizes. So if you want some more chances to win some more stuff, you got to fill out that survey. Please let April and Kate know what a great job they did today. And yeah, I want to remind you that DealerOn is going to be at the upcoming Digital Dealer Convention in Las Vegas, baby. It's going to be at the Mirage, October 5th, 15th, 16th, and 17th. We're going to be at booth 809, impossible to miss. And yes, I'm going to be there. So if you're going to be there, please stop by booth 809 and come by and say hi. We're actually going to be broadcasting live from booth 809, a live webinar broadcast directly from the booth during the Digital Dealer Convention. So you're not going to want to miss that. We have a pretty interesting surprise speaker for that day. I can't tell more until I get it in ink, but I will tell more in a, in a little bit. I have to get it in ink first, so you definitely don't want to miss that. So booth 809 at the Digital Dealer Convention in Vegas, baby. And yeah, invitations are going out tomorrow for our next webinar. and It's a doozy, let me tell you. Fire your third-party lead provider and start generating your own leads. None other than, as I like to call him, the OPN, Original Phone Ninja, Jerry Tivo. <laughs> oh, and, and only Jerry could come up with a controversial title like that. I Can I just tell you, I had to work him over for like a week before he agreed to this title, which was the tamest. <laughs> I, I can't even tell you the original titles he came up with for the same subject. He liter He's on fire. He really wants you to fire your third-party lead provider, but let me just tell you. He is rough. He he wanted me to call people out on this title, and I was like, no, we can't do that. So I got him down to this title, but he's not kidding. He wants to know, how much does your dealership spend on third-party leads every month? Well, what if you could save that money and never have to deal with crappy, outdated, or duplicate third-party leads again and still increase your bottom line? Would you do it? Well, I've got to tell you, our friend Jerry Tebow, he knows how. And he's going to explain why your dealership should immediately fire your third-party lead provider and start relying on something else to easily and effectively generate leads. So this webinar is geared towards dealer principals, managers, and salespeople. And this presentation is going to examine all the different ways your dealership can start generating new business without paying third-party lead providers. You'll also learn how to hunt, farm, and produce quality leads like never before. This one-hour webinar promises to be a game changer, as Jerry Tebow puts it. So if you're ready to kick the third-party lead habit and start quickly generating your own quality leads, then this is one webinar you just can't afford to miss. It's going to be another fabulous presentation by your friends at DealerOn. Don't forget, DealerOn's weekly webinars are held every Thursday at 12 noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. Kate, can I just tell you, I am scared of what Derry Tebow is going to do oh in this God. next webinar. It's, it's promising to be great information and a little controversial, which are my favorites. So there's absolutely no reason why you shouldn't show up, everyone. We have some really great webinar subjects planned for the rest of this year. But if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, regarding these webinars and our topics, hey, contact me directly. I love hearing from you. Again, my name is Eliana Raggio. You can track me down online. I'm on all the automotive social networks. Or you can email me directly at eliana at dealeron.com. Thank you all so very much for spending this time with us today. And I hope to see you all in a future webinar in our continuing education series. Have yourselves a good one.